Sometimes you just want to make weird patterns. Hello and welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today I have a fabric and patterns haul for y'all. Wow, that rhymes, how fun. I currently have a bunch of construction workers right outside my building looking in, so I'm gonna be probably extra awkward this video. First, I'm gonna start with fabric, then some patterns I bought on Etsy. So these ones are ones I bought with a lot of intention. And then this stack here is the last stack, I think, of stuff I will have gotten from the South Carolina estate sale. I don't think I plan on getting anything else at this point unless something really wild is discovered. And there's some really interesting patterns in here. Let's start. And jump into the fabric. First up, we have this vintage pillowcase. It's nice, it's fine. I just always like the high, like quality of linens that are that old, so I buy them to use for other things. Next up, we have this really nice quality black fabric. I bought this with an intention for a project that you'll see sometime in the future here on this channel. It's just a nice high quality cotton. It's also from Style Maker Fabrics. For anyone who remembers, that's where I went on my little retreat with. And then I also got, the main reason I picked up that black fabric is I was already ordering this little they have like a remnant section and it had this little bat fabric that kind of matches some of the other spooky fabric I've bought so I'm excited to sew this up in October. Next up, this was an unintentional buy for Mood. Oh my goodness, it's uh, unfolding. This is a really gorgeous striped and velvet flocked fabric. I love flocked fabrics and there's not very many I see modern day that I really want to buy and make something with because a lot of them are kind of cheesier for me. But I felt like this one was really sophisticated and I can make a really beautiful and sophisticated dress with it. Next up, I'm hoping, oh yes, it catches on camera. Look at this. This is a chiffon braid sparkly fabric from Mood. I will link it down below. I bought this for a very special project I have planned and you'll see I think in early May is when it's on my calendar for uh, assuming I successfully create it. But yeah I'm excited to show you guys this project and I absolutely love this fabric. It comes in a ton of different colors. Next up we have I think the next few fabrics or the last few fabrics are all from Rose Does. She lives close to me and I went over to her sewing space and she was lovely enough to give me some fabrics from her stash. First up is this lovely border print. In her words, she said, I'm not twee enough for this, but I think you are. So here we are. I think this is really cute and I'm excited to like just make it into a gathered skirt. And then same with this guy. I really like the tones of this. It's very 70s. And so this I will probably be making up until a gathered skirt or depending on the yardage, I might make it up into some pants. I don't know, we'll see. She also gave me this knit. She's been encouraging me to venture into the world of knit fabrics, which I am not super excited about, but I do really love this knit pattern. So I'm gonna give it a go at some point. Next up is this Gumberg rayon lining from Mood. I picked up this to try to match a project that I'm not happy with its match. So then I picked up a different type of fabric. I'm just keeping this in my stash. Lining is always useful to have. Next up, I'm very excited about this. This is also from Rose and it's this really beautiful denim with these little printed flowers. She said it was part of the fabric stash she inherited from, I believe, her grandmother. And I'm really excited. I already know what I'm making it into and I can't wait to show you guys. I think this project will be coming in June. That is that one. Now I'm trying to like plan projects out as you guys can maybe see usually I'm like I don't know what I'll make this with this guy here is this really cute polka dot kind of satiny fabric and then this guy here is one of the last one from her this is a really beautiful purple stripe and the stripes have some green and teal on them as well and I really like them and I will be planning on making this up into something I forgot to put on um, lip stuff and since I did like a full face of makeup today it means my lips were probably disappearing for the fabric portion of this video but now we're back we're ready for patterns let's start with what I intentionally bought on Etsy first up is this really lovely gunny sacks pattern it's like most like notable feature is it has like a lot of lace detailing here and it has really nice sleeves so I picked it up for that I've been really loving sewing 70s so I've been trying to pick up more 70s patterns that I can see myself loving next up I've also been kind of getting into I think 70s pants these are really 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 wide leg pants I don't know I'm trying to like find pants that I like and I feel like if pants look more like a skirt I might like them so I think I'm gonna give this one a shot this was a 60s dress that I got because I really liked the shape of it and then I also like it was really cheap because the envelope is in terrible condition it's nice when an envelope looks nice but if an envelope doesn't look perfect doesn't really matter to me as long as like all the pattern pieces are there and then next up is this New York 
pattern. I'm trying to remember if I got this from Stephanie Canada. I make no promises I did, but I think I did. This is really cute. It has little hearts along the hem. I just thought this was adorable and I was like, I have to make this at some point. I am not confident I am a skilled enough curve seamstress to make this turn out okay, but I promise to give it a go. This is, I know for sure from Stephanie Canada because I was looking for this pattern and she had it and I was looking for another pattern and she had it and I swear she always happens to have the patterns I'm looking for in my size. So definitely go and check her store out. I will link it down below, but this one is this really lovely, it has like a petal shaped bodice. It does have a lot of really interesting bodice options. I don't feel like you see that often. So I'm pretty excited to make this up at some point. And then this is the other pattern I got from her that I was actually looking for. This is a pair of wide legged pants. And then I also really like the skirt and the blouse. I liked everything about this pattern and I think it'll be really useful. Next up, we have a simplicity pattern. It kind of looks gunny sacks-ish, so I picked it up. There's specifically like this little pin tucked one that looks kind of gunny sacks as well as this guy here. Both have pin tucks. This I picked up at the thrift shop at some point. I mainly picked it up for the cropped top, but I'm also willing to give the shorts a go. I have a tricky time with shorts because of my butt. There's shorts, pants, and there's a long sleeve button up. Uh, and then we have this easy McCall's pattern. It's just this like crisscross back tank top thing that I think is really pretty and would be pretty easy to make with like scraps. It also has some elastic shorts and pants that I want to try out so I'm excited about these. And then last we also have a actual gunny sacks pattern. This one has mutton sleeves, mutton leg sleeves. I think it's mutton leg sleeves and I'm really excited to use it. It also has a really interesting corset detail up the front. I really like the shape of this gunny sacks and then this gunny sacks feels like it would be really practical for the climate I'm in because it just like looks like it's like designed to be more of a wintry gunny sacks I guess. I don't know. Last of this is actually from the vintage shop that I'm going to be talking about these with. These ones Heather sent me. I'll link her channel down below as well. She found a ton of them and so I have a 60s step-by-step -step sewing book and then a 70s. Okay we're just gonna let that fall. And then a 70s sewing book. I have a sewing book from pretty much every decade from the 40s through the 80s and it's always really interesting because I actually usually reference books that the pattern I'm sewing comes from because I have found the construction methods from different eras very quite a bit which is I don't know I, I just find that really interesting because it's not necessarily something you'd expect and I borrow my sewing practices from pretty much all eras because I just think there's certain things that certain eras do well and then let's grab it and jump into these patterns I'm really excited about these patterns but I do want to note they're in terrible condition so I'm hoping the patterns inside them are kind of okay but the envelopes are pretty gross like I have to wash my hands after touching this lot every single time because it's like gross and these came again from that dressmaking factory estate sale I went to way back with Stephanie Canada and Drew. If so, so Drew, I will link everybody down below. But yeah, Heather sent these to me. I'm very excited about them because like I said, there's a lot of unique patterns that I maybe normally wouldn't spend the money on. So this first one I wanted because the sleeves are really, really interesting. The sleeves are just like kind of weird and pleated. I can't even really say that I like them, but I want to see what they look like, which is like really dumb but I, I don't know I'm just I'm really curious next up I really like this pattern I actually have a dress that I think could have even been made from this pattern I basically like it's a gourd skirt and then it has like this sideways it looks like it has some good stripe play options essentially in it this one here is like a nice little shirt dress I like the kind of fake button front thing it has I don't have anything with that detail. And then I also think I really like the shape of the skirt. It looks like it's gathered exactly the way I like. And then it has three different sleeve options that I think all look great. It has what looks like a like boring short sleeve and then a long sleeve that poofs and then a no sleeves option. So uh, I'm just intrigued. I feel like this pattern gave me a lot of options. This one is one that I also don't know that I would have bought normally, but I thought it was weird and I might make it at some point. I like almost looks like an apron over a dress. I don't know if I like feel like it's like the cutest look, but I'm very intrigued by it and I I don't know sometimes you just want to make weird patterns next up is this really lovely skirt and blouse I'm less intrigued by the blouse however the skirt I really like the skirts pleating pattern as well as it has like some really nice pocket details so that is why I picked this guy up next up this is another one that's in the category of kind of like weird patterns I don't know if I like but I feel like I need to make someday it has like this weird lace scallop apron thing I really like the cape actually that's in this pattern and I really like the sleeves and I like the base dress a lot. I like the sweetheart neckline with the like 
ruched sleeves, I guess. Uh, I think the, that there's a really lovely dress at the base of this, but I also am very intrigued by this weird lace apron thing. Like I said, I just feel icky after touching these, which I, I, the paper inside looks fine. Some of these, uh, it's also interesting. Some of these are folded terribly. Some of these are factory folded. It's just the outside envelopes that don't feel so great. And the way I store my vintage patterns after today, I'll never have to touch the envelopes again. It, it doesn't matter that they're dirty. It just matters like right now because they kind of ick me out. This is just a simple shirtwaist dress. It just had a really interesting detail down the back that I'm intrigued by. If you're gonna make a shirt weight dress, make one that like intrigues you because I find them honestly horribly boring. So that one at least like has a detail that I think is interesting. Next up is I really like, there's a, a few different variations of this. I like the buttons down the side variation that would then be really easy to slip on and off. It also has like a button detail here. And so it looks like, and then it also has a really cute wrap belt detail option. And it also has a really interesting like kind of boat neck, excuse you. Are you angry at the birds? Yeah, are you angry at the birds? Okay, well get out of here and don't bite any patterns, please. Mwah. Go on, run along, run along. There you go. Next up, this is actually, should look familiar to you. I actually have, like I have this made up and I don't really know how that works. Like if they got sent the exact fabric to make up these patterns for testers back in the day. If anybody knows why I have an outfit that's the exact outfit of this pattern. Like they came from the same dressmaking shop. I do know that, but like, did they actually make the dresses that are on the fronts of patterns? Cause that's just like really interesting to me. Cause that had never occurred to me. So if anybody has that, knowledge let me know down below because i'm super curious next up i really like this dress it has a really interesting like cross back detail i also really like this kind of like peep neckline and then it also has ginormous pockets which who doesn't love that i don't know why you're so angsty yeah i don't know why you're so angsty i know the birds are harassing you but it's spring i don't know what to tell you next up i just like the collar of this dress and i liked the stripe play in this pattern and i think it will be pretty i mean this is something that would have been easy for me to make as a variation on my own but i like to have like books of patterns that inspire me as well so i was happy to add this for my collection next up we have this really fun nautical pattern i'm not always a huge nautical pattern fan but i really like the way this one is it has just like a nice bow in the front. It has a really nice silhouette. I also really like in this guy the pencil skirt and how the pockets are on the pencil. I actually think these would be cute on my hips. This one I'm so excited about this dress. I think it looks super super full on the gathers and then it has like oh no like there's a interesting like tie top detail. I just I really like this. Bodice looks really nice. I'm super excited to make this. You will be seeing me make this at some point this summer because it's absolutely stunning and I just love it. Next up we have this really interesting dress. I like can't totally tell. I think it's a pencil dress with an overskirt, but it also might just like kind of be like a weird cape thing at the back of the skirt. I don't know. It's just very interesting and I am excited about it. This is one of the ones that like is folded terribly in here. Like it is so thick. This is a thick boy. As opposed to like all the ones that are thin I can tell are factory folded. It's just funny because I can tell exactly what ones she used. Uh, I'm actually wearing a dress I believe that she made. This one is so cool. I'm so excited about this one. It has really, really interesting and scary looking pleat details along the neckline and along the dress. Uh, I will definitely be planning on making this in the winter, assuming all the pattern pieces are in it. It's in really rough condition. I'm really hoping there's still enough pattern here for me to make this up. I do feel very scared of it at the same time with all of those pleats and gathered things but it's just so interesting. I've just never seen anything like this, so I will be making it and I'm very excited about it. This is just a, I don't know what mail order. It's by Oleg Cassini. This is a really interesting pencil skirt. I really like the way the like dresses. It reminds me, I think, I think her name's Joan in Mad Men. I have not watched Mad Men in a while, but the secretary. This feels like something she would have worn. I think it's really, really lovely. And I'm maybe willing to take a chance on a pencil skirt slash I can always make this a gathered skirt. You've seen me do it once. You'll see me do it again. I also have this really cool Vogue Cotier, wow, couturier, Ugh. 
it has like this interesting like pleated side detail it has this like matching cape thing it could be strapless this is another one that i will give a pencil a gander but also because uh it has like a directional thing happening that kind of requires a pencil but if i really liked the bodice i could definitely just attach it to a gathered skirt but i'm just oh it's so pretty and i'm really excited to make this one up and i really love the illustration of the front here and last i am so excited about both of these both of these are modes royale i have some modes royale pattern books and you just don't see these that often and usually they're really really expensive so i'm super excited to add some to my collection the first one i mean i guess i'll leave it in the i also think it's interesting that it seems like mode patterns always came in these like blue plastic sleeve things because I've always seen them listed like that but this one is this really beautiful pencil dress it's super it's what I love about Modes Royale this pattern is the other one's very symmetrical but this one is super asymmetrical and Modes Royale does a lot of really 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 interesting asymmetrical things I actually uh the closet historian um she does some like magazine books where she shows some of her vintage magazines. If you're interested in that, comment down below because I have two or three Modes Royale pattern books and they are some of the most stunning things I've ever owned. If you'd be interested in having me flip through it and talk about it, I guess, I'd be super open to that. It would be weird and different for me, but I think it could be really fun and I want to definitely share like how cool those books are with everybody. But yeah, this is one of those, and I'm I'm gonna make this. I'm I'm very scared of these patterns. I'm not gonna lie. And they look really complex, but I'm gonna make this one. It's gonna be beautiful. I will figure out how to make it work for my hips because it's just so stunning and so asymmetrical and beautiful. And I love the asymmetry. And there's not that many patterns. Like a lot of my favorite patterns in this stack, I picked up because of the asymmetry. You just don't see that that much in home like sewing patterns. And then this one here is another Moids Royale. It is not asymmetrical, but it has this really Really, really really interesting bow detailing down the back that I've just like never really seen anything like it and then I really like the way the pleats come together in the back I accidentally made a skirt do this once because I read the pleating instructions wrong it happens but yeah I I think this will be so cute and I will also make this one this one feels much more accessible to make I think this one will be the one I make first as opposed to the other one that makes me like just thinking about it honestly makes me nauseous because it's like such a scary looking pattern. I mean, honestly, there's some in this stack that are just super scary and super intimidating, but I'm really excited to like challenge and grow off of them. A huge, huge, huge thank you to Heather for going through her patterns and like helping me get these. And I can't wait to make some of the amazing, scary, intimidating ones. And I also can't wait to make some of the weird ones <laughs> um, in this stack. I realized as I was editing this that I forgot to show you one of the most exciting things that is part of this haul. I have a mannequin now, or a dress form, I guess is what they really are. It is drawn on, it was most likely owned by like a teenage girl or something, but that's okay, I don't mind. I'm just gonna get like a sleeve or whatever and cover it up. I got this for free also from Rose. She had gotten a bunch of dress forms for free or cheap or something. And this one happens to be pretty close to my size. The waist is about the size of my waist. The hips are a little smaller and then the bust is a little bit bigger. I think I can make it work. Primarily I plan to use this for draping and for trim placement. So I don't feel like it really needs to be my exact measurements. I just think it needs to be like close enough that I can usually put the dress on it. Doesn't have a stand. So I'm going to check and see if I can buy one on Amazon or something like that. And if not, it'll be pretty easy to make a dowel and like a heavy enough base for a stand, while this is pretty heavy, I'm pretty crafty and I feel pretty confident that I can make something work for this guy. But I am very excited. So great. I was literally about to buy one and she was like, wait, don't do that. I have extra. And now we will hop back into the normal video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely hit that subscribe button and stick around. I have a lot of sewing and vintage and thrifting content coming up and some really great projects. I mean, I teased two of them out right here in this pile. So definitely stay tuned for that. If you like this video, it really helps me in the algorithm as well as commenting down below. I would love to hear like what your favorite pattern is. Any, I guess, pattern restoration tip. I know I need to get some special type of tape because I think some of these are gonna need some restoration. And I will see you next time. Bye. Whoa, that was dramatic. Sorry, I'm just very distracted by what's going on outside. Ooh, excuse me. Sorry, I like burp in the middle of sentences a lot. Ooh, the Amazon 
one truck just went by. I, I don't know, I kind of feel like a hamster right now or a squirrel. I'm very distracted. Uh -uh. Hold up, that's Amazon. Sorry, <laughs> holding this has got me out of breath.